Hello, and welcome to World Med School. My name is Dr. Brad Hare. I'm an Associate Professor of Clinical Medicine at the University of California in San Francisco. And in today's micro lecture, I'll be talking to you about the uh, uh, treatment of HIV in adults and adolescents. By the end of the talk, you will understand the goals of treatment with antiretroviral therapy, which I will refer to as uh, ART. You'll discuss the risks and benefits of uh, earlier initiation of ART, as well as the guidelines uh, for ART initiation, both in the United States and globally. And finally, we'll highlight some of the patient-centered approaches that you will take uh, when initiating uh, antiretroviral treatment and discussing treatment adherence with your patients. So this graph depicts the natural history of untreated HIV infection over time in an individual. Let me orient you. In blue, the line represents the individual CD4 count in peripheral blood, and in red, we see the HIV viral load in blood. During the early phase of HIV infection, the first few weeks, termed acute infection, we see a very high spike in uh, HIV viral load and an associated decrease in CD4 count that rebounds somewhat, but not generally up to pre-infection uh, CD4 count levels. After that equilibrium is reached and a viral load set point is achieved, um, there's a period uh, in what this slide is termed clinical latency over several years. I think that term is somewhat misleading um, because while a patient may have no clinical signs of HIV infection, they may still have signs such as uh, nonspecific symptoms, fever, weight loss, uh, adenopathy. Um, and what we know more importantly is during that time, there is uh, significant and irreversible, potentially irreversible damage going on both to the immune system as well as to other organ systems in the body. So while HIV may not be clinically apparent, there still is damage uh, going on in the individual uh, as a result of HIV infection. And this is the damage we are trying to prevent with HIV antiretroviral therapy. Over time, however, untreated HIV does progress, CD4 counts do decline, and over time the viral load begins to increase. When those things happen, uh, individuals begin to manifest more symptoms of HIV and may be at risk for opportunistic infections and death, um, and that's the period that we refer to as clinical uh, AIDS. So with that understanding of the natural history, uh, we now have the tools available through antiretroviral therapy to interrupt that natural history and really dramatically change the course of HIV infection in an individual. So our goals for initiating antiretroviral therapy are first to reduce the HIV-associated morbidity and prolong the duration and quality of survival um, as a result of HIV uh, treatment. Secondly, we hope to restore and preserve immunologic function in the individual for long-term benefit. And our goal, how we measure that, is through maximal and durable suppression of plasma HIV viral load. And we also know as a corollary to this that when we suppress uh, viral load optimally in an individual, we also uh, prevent the likelihood that that individual will go on to transmit uh, HIV to uh, uninfected sexual or needle-sharing partners. The uh, advancements in the field of HIV have been really dramatic over the last 15 years. Um, we have seen HIV go from a uniformly fatal disease to now we're thinking of it much more like a chronic infection that we manage over the duration of someone's life. Here we see data um, from the NA Accord cohort looking at survival in North America and people living with HIV. And you can see over um, relatively short periods uh, of time, it's dramatic increases in survival. Uh, these data highlight that in, uh, uh, for a 20-year-old who initiates ART therapy in the year 2006 or 2007, that individual can expect to live uh, to be 67 years old, and that's compared to an overall population life expectancy of nearly 79 years. Uh, updated data from uh, this cohort indicate that those trends are actually continuing to improve, and for some subpopulations, uh, the uh, life expectancy is actually equal to that of an uh, HIV uninfected individual. Importantly, there are still strides that need to be made as there are uh, negative effects of gender, race, HIV risk group, and importantly, CD4 count and ART initiation. All of these things indicating we still have a lot of um, improvements to make and we need to be initiating people at higher CD4 count to get the optimal benefit of antiretroviral therapy. These same benefits are uh, also seen globally. These data are from Uganda, where a 20-year-old, again, who initiates ART can expect a life expectancy of 46.7 years compared to a population life expectancy of 61.6. Um, and again, these results are affected by gender um, and importantly by CD4 count. So if we diagnose HIV early, initiate ART at high CD4 counts, 
we're able to preserve the immunologic function and decrease the damage done by HIV over time. And that translates really to a significant survival advantage to, uh, to the individual. I want to spend a few moments here on this slide um, where I've really tried to highlight um, a, a lot of data that have led us to believe uh, currently that ART is uh, most beneficial when initiated early. Um, thinking about the, uh, the option to delay antiretroviral therapy, there are concerns around uh, ART drug toxicity, the need for safety monitoring and drug costs, um, and then also preserving various uh, options for antiretroviral treatment so individual, individuals don't run out of treatment. Uh, people who are concerned about uh, early ART worry about the development of drug resistance that might limit an individual's options over time. Um, and then we all know that it's very difficult for people to adhere to antiretroviral regimens. <clears throat> and if we put them on earlier, we're asking for longer periods of, uh, of adherence. So those concerns led people to think that it may be reasonable to delay antiretroviral therapy. Um, however, with the currently available therapies, um, a number of studies and uh, fields of work have really demonstrated the overall benefits of early antiretroviral therapy, benefits for the individual and benefits for um, the, a population. So on the early ART side, uh, the currently available ART regimens are more efficacious, convenient, and tolerable compared to prior regimens. So some of the concerns about regimen complex complexity and tolerability are um, less of concern in, with the modern uh, treatments. Uh, we also not only have better treatments, we have more treatment options. So people who do experience virologic failure or have drug resistance <clears throat> will have the uh, opportunity to have fully virologically suppressive regimens for the most part. Um, and we also learned that um, contrary to the concerns that initiating ART earlier actually leads to a lower development of uh, uh, drug resistance over time. <clears throat> Early ART tends to be tolerated better, and people have fewer toxicities when they initiate ART, a high CD4 count. Um, and in, in addition, I mentioned uh, before that we're worried not only about the effects on the, vir uh, on the immune system, but also the effects of the virus on other organ systems. And we recognize that uncontrolled HIV viremia is causing damage over time to other organ systems, in particular cardiovascular system, uh, neurologic system, the central nervous system, um, can uh, drive uh, uh, bone mineral density loss, uh, as well as damage to uh, kidney and liver. So all of these things are going on during the period of uncontrolled viremia. And right now, our understanding is the best way to prevent those uh, damage, damages from happening is to control the viremia. I showed you previously that ART dramatically increases the lifespan of the individual um, and will also decrease HIV transmission. So in balance, all of those fav uh, factors really do favor uh, early antiretroviral therapy initiation. So how have the guidelines changed to reflect that? Let me first focus on U.S. guidelines with the Department of Health and Human Services. Um, the question of what to start and when to start is an age-old question in HIV ever since we've had effective therapy. And the pendulum has swung back to early uh, initiation. The most recent iteration of the DHHS guidelines recommend um, antiretroviral therapy in all HIV-infected individuals. Um, that was my emphasis added there. But I think it's important that we recognize that the guidelines now reflect um, universal treatment. Um, and this is done for the individual benefit to reduce the risk of disease progression. The strength of uh, the evidence actually does vary by CD4 count, um, with the strongest evidence being at CD4 counts less than 350, but between 350 and 500, and in fact above 500, there's still, there is now consensus that treatment um, uh, is uh, beneficial for the individual. Um, secondarily, treatment is recommended uh, uh, to prevent transmission to uh, uh, uninfected partners. So while there is clearly benefit to the individual of ART initiation at any CD4 count, there's also demonstrated uh, benefit to his or her partners. Um, that's true clearly in perinatal transmission, heterosexual transmission, um, and also uh, believed to be uh, 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 believed to be effective at preventing transmission in other risk groups as well. The question in the U.S. of what to start when it's time to initiate ART is a long discussion um, and a very nuanced one. But in general, the guidelines recommend four different regimens uh, currently as options for the preferred uh, ART initiation. 
uh, and those include regimens that are NNRTI-based, protease inhibitor-based, and integrase inhibitor-based. Uh, the individualization of those regimens depend on your patient profile, um, as well as uh, uh, comorbidities and other factors that you'll consider. It's important to recognize, too, there's a long list of alternative regimens. So for people who may be better suited to one of these regimens, the guidelines do provide options for alternative ART initiation. Globally, the World Health Organization guidelines um, mirror those in the, in the United States largely with some important changes. Uh, these are the most recent 2013 uh, updates to the World Health Organization guidelines in recommending when to start ART in global settings. The WHO uh, clearly indicates uh, ART is appropriate in all individuals with uh, WHO clinical stage 3 or 4 disease, regardless of CD4 count. In individuals who have clinical stage 1 or 2 uh, HIV disease, ART is uh, indicated uh, at CD4 counts below 500 um, and with preference given to individuals with below 350 CD4 count. In addition, special populations are highlighted here. Individuals with uh, concomitant tuberculosis, ART is clearly beneficial in those with active TB disease, regardless of uh, CD4 count. Same is true with hepatitis B co-infection and severe liver disease. And the WHO guidelines now also acknowledge the importance of using uh, ART as a prevention tool in serodiscordant couples. Um, and the WHO guidelines do uh, suggest that we provide ART uh, to uh, HIV-infected partners who are in serodiscordant relationships. The, which treatments to start in the WHO guidelines uh, uh, vary uh, slightly from U.S. guidelines. Um, in general, the WHO guidelines are NNRTI-based, and you can see their preferred regimen here of tenofovir uh, with either lamivudine or emtricitabine and efavirenz, um, with some alternate uh, regimens listed as well as some special populations. So with that in mind, I think it's important to take a moment to um, highlight ways in which we might approach ART initiation in a patient-centered patient way. Um, it's clear that the key to successful ART treatment in the long term is really patient adherence. So getting patients um, involved in the decision-making process around when and what to initiate um, ART um, is really beneficial in the long term. Building a trusting relationship with your patient with open communication uh, will give you the opportunity to understand your patient's perspective and allow you to make better treatment decisions um, in partnership with your patients. Um, I think it's really important from the beginning to proactively identify potential challenges to ART adherence and to try to address those as much as possible. Those will vary quite a bit by individuals and in different settings, um, but some things to think about will be the individual's schedule, whether that's work or school schedule, travel schedule, their meal schedule, certain ART will require different uh, food and uh, fluid requirements. Um, so understanding that will be helpful. And many populations, um, mental health, substance use, and um, uh, housing instability are really quite uh, significant barriers uh, to adherence. And to the extent possible, addressing those proactively and trying to stabilize those factors for patients will help them be successful uh, in the long, ter long term. Food insecurity, medication insecurity, changes in insurance status, all of those can pose threats to uh, ART adherent, adherence, uh, and the astute practitioner needs a therapeutic alliance with their patient so that those uh, concerns can be communicated uh, and addressed proactively. In addition, with the, um, the number of different regimens that I've uh, uh, highlighted for you, um, it's important to pick ones that are convenient to a patient's lifestyle and will minimize the chance for a patient to experience toxicities. Um, again, I think that uh, uh, talking about that up front with your patient will be beneficial in the long term. Um, and then importantly, at every visit subsequent to ART initiation, it's important to talk about um, ART adherence, assess someone's uh, tolerability of drugs, their treatment, um, uh, adherence, and try to use uh, standardized and reproducible tools to the extent possible. So in summary today, I've hoped I've uh, talked to you a little bit about the importance of initiating uh, antiretroviral therapy in all individuals infected with HIV infection. Um, we've re recognized that uh, ART treatment has really revolutionized the care of individuals living with HIV. And for um, most uh, people now uh, who have HIV infection, their HIV can be managed as a lifelong chronic condition um, and therefore requires uh, lifelong treatment as, as best we know now. 
Um, modern ART regimens are highly efficacious, convenient, and well-tolerated, all of which are beneficial for the patient. And in our current state, having multiple uh, ART options allows us to individualize treatment to, our ind to the individual patient, um, again, optimizing long-term outcomes. So with that information, it's important that we convey this information to patients, that we support them um, when they're ready to initiate uh, and to maintain ART adherence. And when we're able to do that, we actually result in improved health outcomes, improved survival, um, improved quality of life, and I would add decreased transmission as well. So with that, I will um, leave you with those thoughts. Uh, thank you for your uh, time and attention, and thank you for studying with World Med School.